According to the International Tennis Federation, a ball's bounce is within regulation if, when dropped from a height of 100 inches onto a concrete floor, it reaches a bounce height of between 53 and 58 inches. So I wanted to see if the tennis balls I use, these Slashinger balls, met the regulation, but I also wanted to see how fast they degraded in time. Uh, so I'm going to compare two balls out of the same can. One I'm not going to touch. I'm going to see how, how the bounce changes over time when it just sits there doing nothing. And the other ball I'm going to actually be playing tennis with pretty much every day. And I'm going to see if it degrades at the same speed. And I want to see whether it's worth buying one of these pressurizing devices or whether the leakage is so slow that it's not worth it. I remember a long time ago when I first started playing tennis, it seemed like the balls uh, lost pressure very quickly. But it seems like these days they are more slow to lose the pressure. But I don't know if that's my imagination. So I'm going to do these testings, this testing to see uh, what the real truth is. Okay, so first I'm going to show you my test apparatus. There is a ball on a flexible ramp suspended 100 inches above the floor, which is a ceramic floor, very hard like concrete. It's going to bounce up, and in the background you can see a ruler so we can see how high it bounces. So I pull down on the flexible ramp. The ball will fall. This is my new ball that after one day, and it reaches a height of 54 inches, or 53 inches, let's say. I'm going to do it again. New ball, 54 inches this time. Now I'm going to use the ball that was used, the used ball, and 56 inches. And we're going to do it again, the used ball, and it is 56, almost 57 inches. So you can see both these balls fall within regulation. The ball that was used in the tennis match actually is bouncing a little bit higher. I think this is just coincidence. Every ball bounce is different, but we'll see how these results change over time. Next test in about five days. Okay, I'm back after only three days, and I realized I could expedite this process because I realized I had some old balls in my tennis bag. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to test six balls. They're all Schlesinger. They're all the same type of balls. The four balls at the top are out of the same can. The ball on the very left has been opened three days ago. It's never been used. The other two, the other three balls have been opened also three days ago, the same can, but they've been used in two sets. The ball on the bottom left was opened uh, two weeks ago. It's now retired, and uh, it's been used about 11 times. And the ball on the bottom right was opened one month ago, and it was used 10 times before I retired it. So I'm going to test all six of these balls today. Let's get going. I will test each of these six balls two times and record the results. Ball one, three days old, never used 58 inches. Ball one, three days old, never used 58 inches. Ball two, three days old, used twice, 52 inches. Ball two, three days old, used twice, 52 inches. Ball three, three days old, used twice, 54 inches. Ball three, three days old, used twice, 60 inches. Ball four, three days old, used twice, 54 inches. Ball four, three days old, used twice, 54 inches. Ball five, two weeks old, used 11 times, 63 inches. Ball 5, 2 weeks old, used 11 times, 63 inches. Ball 6, 1 month old, used 10 times, 58 inches. Ball 6, 1 month old, used 10 times, 58 inches. Okay, well here is my results and conclusions based on my experiments. I find that playing with the balls does not seem to reduce the pressure. I've heard players say that if the harder you hit the ball, the more quick it is to lose pressure. I don't think they base this on any science or testing. I think it's just their intuition, and I think their intuition is wrong. I didn't see any evidence that playing with the ball makes it lose pressure. I think, yes, if you hit the ball so hard that you break it, it will lose all its pressure. Otherwise, I don't think it makes any difference how many times you hit it, as long as it doesn't break. 
And I find that the balls are very slow to lose pressure. Even after two weeks and used 11 times, it bounced 63 inches, one set of balls. And another set of balls, after a month and used 10 times, bounced 58 inches. So it seems that under most circumstances, a pressurizer is not needed. And I wonder, has anything changed? Because as I mentioned earlier in the video, I seem to remember before, years ago, that the tennis balls did lose pressure very fast, but now they don't seem to. And I was thinking that maybe, uh, you know, because of uh, the environment and things like that, they changed their attitudes, so that they, they got rid of the planned obsolescence so that the balls last longer. They, they still wear out if you use it too many times, but at least they won't uh, uh, wear out from doing nothing. They won't uh, lose their pressure from doing nothing. Uh, and or I thought maybe this is what happened. Uh, if you notice that uh, that these balls are made in the Philippines, here's a picture of my balls, and you can see it's made in the Philippines. And I'm wondering maybe they know that people in the Philippines can't really afford to get lots of tennis balls, so maybe they make the balls here to last longer, and the ones in the United States uh, lose their pressure quicker, so people will buy them more quickly. Is that possible? I'd be happy if somebody else. Uh, were to do a test and see if it's true for balls made in the U.S. of A. And uh, finally, I want to say something about uh, if you do decide to get one of these pressurizers. I don't really have a lot of experience with them. Uh, if you see the one on the left, I have used that one a long time ago. I didn't find that it works. And I know some people will say that it works, but the principle isn't very sound to me because you're just taking two halves and you're screwing them together hoping that that makes the pressure inside go higher and you rely on a gasket a sliding gasket that can't leak and it just seems to me it's not going to really hold its pressure and there's no way of knowing what pressure is inside it so i'm very skeptical of the uh, item on the left if you're going to buy one of these i suggest you buy this a new kind of pressurizer that you could see on the right that's available on the internet and this is a more sound principle because you can fill it up with as much air as you want and you can measure the pressure of the air. You're supposed to have the, uh, 14 pounds of pressure. The, 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 the pressure inside the ball is supposed to be 14 pounds, so if you blow up the tube to 14 pounds, no, no uh, pressure will leak outside the ball. So if you play tennis once every few months, I guess maybe one of these things is worth it. I don't know, but if you play tennis only once every few months, you probably don't care if the balls are a little dead. So I, I sort of conclude that these... Uh, and if you're a really good player, you don't you, you want to change the balls often anyhow, even if they still have pressure because you don't want worn out balls. So it seems to me these pressurizers uh, have limited use, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so that's the end of my video. I hope uh, I hope I was of some interest. And if somebody wants to test these balls in the United States to see if they hold the same pressure as the ones made in the Philippines, I'd be very interested uh, to know the results about that. Thank you. The end. Bye.